Retina, part one. In front of this eye, an object forms an image on the retina, and zooming in, the image is sampled by the photoreceptors. In a primate retina, there are millions of cones responsible for color vision, and even more rods for vision in dim lights. Signals from these photoreceptors are then processed by horizontal cells, bipolar cells, and endocrine cells. Finally, the retina ganglion cells send the retina outputs to the central brain by the optic nerve. In primates, the response of a typical retinal ganglion cell can be approximated as a weighted summation of photoreceptor signals. Let's formulate it this way. So Sx is a function of x. It is the signal from the photoreceptor at image location x. After a brief transient, the steady state response from a ganglion cell is achieved and let's denote this response value as O. O stands for output. And this O value can be modeled by this linear summation. It is as if from each photoreceptor there is a linear connection weight and this connection weight is kx1 from photoreceptor at location x1 and another weight kx2 from photoreceptor at location x2 etc and this function kx is often called a filter or a kernel for each ganglion cell, this Kx is non-zero only within a limited spatial region and negligible beyond this region. And this region defines the residual field of this neuron. If we let the center of the residual field be at location x equal to zero, then a retinal ganglion cell's residual field property described by this filter function Kx can be modeled by this function. And here is a Gaussian function of x, and here is another Gaussian function of x. So this residual field is modeled as a difference between two Gaussians. In a two-dimensional image space with axis x and y, this residual field is k as a function of both x and y. So the first Gaussian could look like this in the two-dimensional space. The second Gaussian appears like this. Its center is darker because the second Gaussian has a negative sign in front of it. The first Gaussian has a radius about sigma c, parameterized here, and the second Gaussian has a larger radius, sigma s. And uh, these two weights, wc and ws, model the strengths of the two Gaussians. They often have similar values. Then the coefficients for the two exponentials are such that the first coefficient is larger than the second one. So the excitatory strength of the first Gaussian at the very center is stronger than the inhibitory strength of the second Gaussian at the very center. Then combining them together gives this residual field. This is called a center surround residual field, with the center contributed mostly by the first Gaussian and its surround mostly by the second Gaussian. So this neuron can be excited by bright image signals at the center, but is inhibited by bright image signals away from the very center, but can be excited by dark image signals at those surrounding image locations instead. So this is also called an uncenter of surround residual field. And when these two weights, WC and WS, are similar in value, then combining the center as surround, when the input image is uniformly bright or uniformly dark, this neuron is neither excited nor inhibited. In other words, this neuron prefers an image contrast between the center and surround, so it should be excited by a bright spot against a dark background. The brighter region is called 
the um region of the rest of the field, and the darker region is called the off region of the rest of the field. Some retinal ganglion cells are off center and um surround, and this can be achieved by making these weights WC and WS negative. And these neurons should be excited by a dark spot in a bright background. We also call these two types of neurons uncenter neurons and off-center neurons. And this means the neuron is turned on or turned off by a bright spot at its center. Turning on or turning off a neuron actually means to increase or decrease its firing rate because each neuron has a spontaneous activity level when there is no visual input so that the whole visual field has a uniform luminance. So for this neuron, a bright or a dark spot at its center will increase or decrease its firing rate from this spontaneous level. In either case, a neuron's firing rate is informative about the visual input. Typically, a recitative field is very small. For a retinal ganglion cell in monkeys, it's only a fraction of a degree in visual angle. Different neurons have different center regions of their recitative fields, so that the whole population of the retinal ganglion cells can collectively sample the whole visual field adequately. Recitative fields are smaller in the central visual field than in the peripheral visual field, so neurons are more densely packed at fovea, which is in the central part of the retina.